Welcome back to the channel. So I have this little 90 hatchback in here today. It came in for a fuel leak problem on the fuel tank, which although it's usually a seal, this turned out to actually be a hole in the top of the tank. So we've replaced all of that stuff. But the thing about this car is the guy who owns it bought it at an auction. It has no provenance. He doesn't really know the story on the car. And so he asked me to do a little bit of investigation to see what's really in the car. So what I'm going to show you today is how we assess the final drive in the car, the rear end, try and figure out what gears are in it and try and figure out if it's a traction lock and whether the traction lock is operational. One of the most obvious places to start is with the axle tag. Now, I'm pretty sure that this tag should have been on this bolt. So someone's probably been in this rear end. However, if we take a look at the tag, we can see here it says L08. What that means is it's a limited slip. That's what the L is. And the 08 means it's a 308. So this car had factory 308 gears. One of the easiest ways to determine whether it has a traction lock or some other limited slip differential is to get both wheels off the ground and turn one. And you can see as I rotate this passenger side, the driver's side turns at the same rate. That means we've got some kind of a limited slip in there. 99% of the time in one of these, it's a traction lock. I don't hear any clicking, so there's no way it's a locker. It could be a Torsen, it could be an Auburn, it could be something like that, but it's for sure a clutch style limited slip differential. Okay, so I've marked the passenger side wheel with a piece of green painter's tape and I've marked the drive shaft with a piece of masking tape. You can do this any way you want. You can use a reference on the wheel like the uh, valve stem for instance, but it's easier for you to see on camera this way. And then all we're gonna do is turn the wheel through one full revolution and count the number of revolutions of the drive shaft. So let's give that a whirl here. One, two, three. And we're starting to see that come right around to the bottom again. three and change. So we know that our ratio is a little over three to one. The tag says 308. It's unlikely that someone swapped this for a 327. Um, it's definitely not three and a half. So I'm going to say we're fairly confident that what we're dealing with here is an actual 308 final drive ratio. There's a test to determine whether the traction lock clutches are in spec and that test involves jamming one wheel usually just by lifting one side off the ground and keeping the other on the ground or in this case I used a broom handle between the spokes of the passenger side wheel to hold it in place and then checking how much torque it takes to break the other wheel away. So when one stays stationary, how much torque does it take to break the other wheel away? Now, there's a special Ford tool. It bolts on across uh, two bolts and centers the torque wrench on the center line of the wheel. If you don't have that tool, which probably you don't, uh, you can use a deflection style torque wrench like this on one lug nut and we'll just do a little math to determine how much the torque reading is distorted. Let's turn this and we'll see how much torque it takes to break free. That's 20, just a little less than 20. In fact, it's probably free turning around 15 foot pounds. Let's try it again. Break away just short of 20 and then as I turn it it's probably just north of 15. Now this is calibrated in five foot-pound increments so I'm going to say that's about 
16 foot pounds continuous and probably 18 or 19 breakaway. After we get that reading, which we're gonna call 16 foot pounds continuous and about 18 or 19 to break away, we're gonna do a little math to figure out how much that torque reading is distorted by the fact that we're not taking it on the center line of the axle. The stock four bolt Fox body wheel uses a four and a quarter bolt circle. So that means the distance between two studs that are directly across from each other is 4.25 inches. You can do a little verification of this. If you set your caliper to 2.125, that's half of four and a quarter. And we'll go about the center there. And we'll go about, look at about the center of the stud. And we can see that looks about right. So that's the number we're gonna use as our offset when we do the math to determine what the real breakaway torque is on the center line of the axle. To do this torque calculation, you'll need to know the length of your torque wrench, the offset of the lug nut from the axle center line, and the breakaway torque reading. Divide the length of the torque wrench by the length of the torque wrench plus the axle center line offset. Then divide the torque reading by this number to get the corrected torque reading at the axle center line. In this case, the torque wrench is 17 and a half inches long and the lug nut offset is 2.125 inches. Add 17 and a half to 2.125 to get 19.65. Divide 17.5 by 19.65 to get 0.89. Divide the 18 foot-pounds breakaway torque by 0.89 to get 20.22 foot-pounds on the axle center line. That reading is right on the Ford spec for breakaway torque on a traction lock. So that's the easy way to figure out both what gears you have in the car and whether the traction lock is within spec. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell so that you won't miss out on future videos.